48 seconds of logos. Strolling synchronized mask lifting may be a nice visual flourish, but seasoned criminals put that on way before anyone gets a chance to spot their faces. Also, this group of thieves are great. They found the one area in Atlanta where there isn't any traffic. That's some good high scouting right there. I was going to go with my usual way too nitpicky observation here, but seeing the obvious joy in the scene put together by the music, the actor whose name I can't pronounce, and Edgar Wright, I'm knocking a sin off. Dry wiping. We would not be hearing this from outside the building. You see Fast and the Furious? This is how you film a car doing a stunt. I'm gonna knock another sin off and retroactively add one to the Fast and Furious franchise somehow. I mean, this is probably the morning. The bank was open and there were customers in there, but where in Atlanta can you speed to 80 at this hour? This automotive shell game is supremely fun and clever, but the chances of two other red cars that look similar from above with the exact same paint color, exact same sunrooves, and exact same wear and tear happening to drive by at just the right moment is about the same as the chances no one in the comments will complain that we take this all just a tad bit too seriously. <laughs> Sure, this might work to get one car to the center, but exactly why did the other car slow down to stay even with them? That third car would have been long gone by the time Baby got back up to speed. As they ditch this ride, surely to be found by cops later, now might be a good time to count each place Baby left a beautiful ungloved fingerprint as a gift for the police. The steering wheel, the gear shift, the parking brake, the rear view mirror, the wiper switch, the air violin, side of the freaking car. Seriously, look at that. It's like he's purposely printing each finger just so the police can have a full set. This building that simulates a road with a double yellow line up it is so clever and beautiful it had to be mentioned. But if we stop every time Edgar Wright does something visually clever or beautiful, we'd be here till the Avatar sequels come out. So here's a sent off for this moment and for many moments like this to come. Uh, four black coffees, medium. Four coffees in less than five seconds? Movie apparently hasn't been to a coffee shop lately. I'm pretty sure barista is Italian for it will be ready when I say it's ready. See this scar? It's apparently part of Baby's face. Except when it's not, like mere seconds ago. <laughs> Baby is addicted to deaf people. Through some kind of magic trick, Deborah gets ready for work with her hair tied back in four seconds. Does she not hear this? Hello? Did she just grab his recorder and start recording? How does she know there isn't something important already on that tape? I'm just saying my dad grabbed a VHS to record the Tigers winning the World Series in 84, and now my mom can't find the tape of their wedding ceremony. Coincidence? Yeah, cute shoes, but solid sole, raised heel shoes are not the type of footwear worn by people who have jobs that keep them on their feet all day. The drive is supposed to be the eyes and the ears. Not just the eyes. When Doc assembles his crews, is it required to have somebody who hates Baby immediately for almost no reason? Edgar Wright calls this a double Oscar shot. I call it a horrible boss's reunion. Tomato, tomato. He stole my Mercedes. Had a lot of merch in it. I watched him do it too. I didn't stop him though because I was just blinded by the balls on that kid. Yeah, well, considering what they're saying about you these days, I'm not surprised. What the f is this mess? Austin Powers. This is a funny f up with the Michael Myers Halloween mask that was part of the plan. But why are they finding out about this just now? In fact, since Doc is the one setting up this heist, why didn't he already have the Michael Myers masks? The plan is so meticulously thought out, I'm surprised Doc even allows the robbers to buy their own masks. Watch out, watch out, watch out. What the? Who even is this guy? Are we supposed to believe he's just a bystander? Who happens to have military experience? Who happens to have a loaded automatic weapon hiding in the front seat with a safety off? Also, even if he had time to prep, why was the handgun still stowed? And why was he parked in the back of a parking lot like this? This car seat chest buckle is already unlatched, which means either bad job by mama or bad job by movie. We know better than to blame mama. This one's on you, movie. I left my shotgun behind. Uh, what? I left my shotgun behind. It's almost like Doc picked the dumbest crew ever for this job. How did these guys even get recommended? Wait a second, let me get this straight. You execute a guy for accidentally leaving a shotgun behind, and in doing so, you leave bloody fingerprints on the car and a bloody blanket hanging out of the trunk for any passersby to see? Irony much? Also, how do you not know that trunk didn't shut? Even just by sound, everyone knows when a trunk is fully shut. That car had more open trunk than an elephant on antihistamines. It's Debbie. Deborah. Damn it, Debbie Deborah. Have you no boundaries? Keep your hands off my recorder. There is no universe in which a pair of standard issue iPod headphones stretches that far between two people. Except, of course, the universe where a romantic laundromat scene is needed. Joseph wants Baby to get a job delivering pizzas, which is fine. But this is the only thing he thinks Baby can do? Or is this the only mail spam Joseph gets that inspires job opportunities? Whoa! That was fast! I get the joke that his driving skills get it there quick, but the actual drive isn't really the part that takes a while. Unless Baby is also driving the oven, this is misplaced gratitude. Is everything okay, Baby? 
You wanna talk about it? Don't get me wrong, Lily James is captivating in this movie, but her character is written with absolutely zero agency. The women in this movie seem to only exist in relation to what the men need, and have characters as thin as CG Matt Damon in the last half hour of The Martian. What do you know tomorrow? You tell me. It's as if Edgar Wright heard that last sin and wrote one more line just to prove my point. Sheesh. So go inside, take note of the number of cameras and positions. I know that Doc just showed how much power he has over Baby, but does he seriously not have anyone else who can take notes about the post office? Doc made a point to say he never uses the same crew twice, but I guess that doesn't mean he can't mix and match from other crews from time to time. Pick a lane, buddy! You know, it was real, real romantic. What was real, real romantic? That guy. Darling plays the that guy game so that Buddy has to ask who the hell that guy is. The guy that robbed you, the guy that called you a whore, the guy that looked at you funny. Matt just looked at me funny. If Buddy is so prone to killing people after stuff like that, then why is Darling talking about murdering bats in front of Baby? Maybe we should infer that she always asks him to do that. But I can't believe she's so cavalier to discuss it right now just because she thinks Baby won't say anything. Even Darling here only exists in relationship to Buddy. Her tattoo literally says his for Pete's sake. Let's go. Okay, so Bath just killed the convenience store clerk to steal some gum, something that would have been easy to do without killing anyone, and it establishes once and for all that Bath is a psychopath. But is he stupid too? This store has cameras, and he was in that store without a mask. And while we're at it, it looks like the clerk is behind some late night bulletproof glass or whatever. Even if Bath has the capability of shooting the clerk somehow, how did nobody in the car hear it? I just love smoking pigs. Never mind that Bats' partners have no idea he's going to start shooting, but once they do realize it, they are outnumbered and using handguns against guys with automatic weapons. Yet the entire crew survives. What the f*** is this guy doing? Nobody knew he was alive, and he thought the best course of action was to make a run for it towards the people who just killed everybody? The f***ing f***. And aren't there plenty of cars he could have gotten into that were already running? So what's your real name, darling? Monica. I thought we were allowed to discuss names. Why would Darling tell Bats her real name? Didn't she want this guy killed a minute ago? Why doesn't she tell him to f off already? Hey, stop, stop, stop with me. Of f***ing course, of all the gin joints and all the Atlantas of the world, Bats wants to go into this f***ing diner. And Deborah's working at this time of night. Haven't we seen her working day shifts all this time? I guess Baby has his don't talk to me or you'll get exposed as someone I care about, which will put you in danger face on. Because Deborah instinctively knows not to say anything to him as he walks in. So they go through all this shit just to order some Cokes. Don't even drink them and leave? What kind of manufactured plot bullshit is this? Bat said he was super hungry. I guess now he's gonna do a southern tradition and hit up Waffle House or Crystal. I got this. Somehow Baby is able to stop this true psycho from punching him in the face and shooting up the diner. I disagree with this film's portrayal of what would have actually happened. Well, your contacts was cops, Doc. I know. They were my cops. Is there any reason why you wouldn't share that information with your crew? And another thing, if Doc has these cops on the payroll, then why can't he get somebody to just hand deliver the weapons to the crew? Why set up this whole thing in the middle of nowhere and waste everybody's time? Is that true, they fired first? Despite everyone's body language in this scene and terrible poker faces, Doc believes this story enough to continue with the heist, despite justified paranoia. And why is this heist so goddamn important right now anyway? It's not like the post office or the money orders are going anywhere. Even if Doc is convinced the police won't figure out who killed their boys, why risk it now when you can just as easily do it next week? Baby, your call. Time to make a big boy decision. Do we do this thing or not? Ah! Why would he listen to this thing here of all places? And man, that tape recorder sure is awesome for being in his pocket and picking up Doc like he's speaking directly into the microphone. Baby, who is a world-class getaway driver who sees every detail in front of him when he's in a car, only notices Buddy when we notice him. Cause we gotta discuss this. Oh, you mean the recorder Baby would absolutely never leave out of his possession unless it was convenient for the plot? Yes, let's discuss that. Also, Bat saw Baby Lee and he thought, I'll go to his room first. I'm trying to figure out this scenario. We saw Bats wake up but the first instinct was not to track Baby down, but rummage through his room? And maybe he heard Baby stupidly playing that tape recorder earlier and knew he needed to do something about it, but what made him so sure it would still be there? Maybe he knew Buddy was going down to catch him, but Buddy seems super surprised to see Bats show up, so it doesn't appear they coordinated this. Baby, your call. Time to make a big boy decision. Do we do this thing or not? I also love how this recorder absolutely nails the start time on that phrase each and every time. Deborah. Deborah, isn't that the waitress from the diner? I would believe Bats remembering this name, but I'm not buying Darling remembering it. Bats was the one who bothered to check out the name tag and say the name out loud. And while the movie made a big deal out of showing her name tag, it's not like the whole crew was paying attention that much. I'm your driver tomorrow. I'm driving. 
Okay, well, we'll just forget all these tapes, and that you were clearly trying to escape earlier. We can see now that you're just a struggling musician who knows how to drive fast. So sorry for the misunderstanding. That's how bad guy stuff works, right? Jeez, Baby communicates to yet another person what he needs them to do simply by looking at them. This postal clerk gets the entire message she needs from a look and a head shake. And does she recognize Baby from his visit the other day, despite him wearing sunglasses? And how convenient she's not in the post office right now and is just getting to work. Holy crap. Three, two, two. Utility truck parked outside a post office with stabbing rods ex machina. Uh, no! <laughs> Whoa, wait a second. What button did he just hit before sending bats to a pole lancing lesson? Passenger airbag off? I could send it for thinking that somehow the airbag would have made any difference with his impalement. But the real sin is thinking the audience would even know what button he pushed that quickly. There's no way after all the f**kery that the cops knew what store Baby was in. The guy hopped three escalators and totally lost them. And besides, even if they knew which store he was in, why didn't they have someone at the exit to prevent an escape? In the long hallowed tradition of movie car theft, Baby realizes all you need is something straight and metal to get a car started. No way. Darling would be amazing at cinema sins. Good grief, little darling. Unless the police force is now 10 feet tall or have all decided to ascend into the trees, you are aiming way too high. <laughs> Ever notice in a gunfight how no one can hit anything until it's time for a character to die? And then all of a sudden, everybody becomes marksman of the year? We do. Your buddy's here. The last time we saw Buddy, he was still in a shootout with the APD and the movie cut away from it. He was almost certainly going to get shot or captured in that parking lot, but through Filmnesia, he's here now like nothing happened. Got a bathroom key. What diner uses a restroom key? The restrooms are open, right? It's an eating establishment where restrooms are there for easy access. What's happening, baby? Oh, a kiss. That's enough for me. But we don't have a car or music. And as if on cue, two druggies drive their amazing sports car out into the middle of nowhere to facilitate this love story. Vaping is the new biting an apple. This shot is done 100% practically. Damn. You and I are a team. Don't feed me any more lines from Monsters, Inc. It pisses me off. Yeah, if you're going to go Pixar, do a bug's life. There's nothing I can do for you, kid. Why should I after what you've done to me? Wait, is that her cue to come in? Go. I'll deal with the cops. Did someone order a heart transplant? How on God's green earth did the same guy who said this You can break your legs and kill everyone you love All of a sudden become Mr. Self-Sacrifice? I might buy that he lets him go, but put himself in danger? Movie gives no character motivation for that in the slightest. That's not the cops. So Buddy knew that Baby would show up to the hideout? What gave him that idea? The script? There's no way he thinks Doc would be okay with Baby showing up here. <laughs> Car survives this. Okay, two things here. Either he got out and Baby should have seen it, or he didn't get out and he should be dead. There's no scenario by which Buddy gets out of this and is able to get the drop on Baby, but that's what the movie's gonna tell us. Villain won't die cliche. Movie continues to be kind to Baby whenever he needs to escape a situation. Just a reminder, none of the bullets that made any of those bullet holes even grazed either of our leads. Yay! And he threw my purse right at me. Then he actually said I'm sorry. You mean after he put a gun to your head and stole your car? Yeah, seems like a great guy. Let's take some years off the sentence for a little apologetic purse chuckery. I hereby sentence the defendant to 25 years in the federal penitentiary, subject to a parole hearing after five years served. No, just no. The minimum sentence for armed robbery in Georgia is 10 years without parole, and that's per offense, which the movie has reminded us is a lot. Add to that, if someone is killed, it's an automatic life sentence whether you do the killing or not with the earliest parole being 30 years. Bull to the sh I don't want to go in there, it sucks. Think of a place that's really perfect. Your own happy place. You must move this car, I'm gonna blow your hell. Move. Nobody puts baby in a corner. You got 30 seconds, asshole! F you, buddy. Ah, uh, f you, buddy! Hello? Hello? I can still hear her little voice. Most killers are first timers. You wanna pull off a brilliant murder, you gotta act like it's an accident. If you do it right, you ain't even gotta be there when it goes down. Are you there, detective? If so, 
You are probably the last man standing. You need to sunset that ride. We're going to a place called Monster Joe's Truck and Tow. Now, Monster Joe and his daughter Raquel are sympathetic to our dilemma. Can't keep running, baby! There's no escape! I will find him!